This metal detector kit has been sitting around for a couple of months, so it's time to put it to use and see how it works. It's all through holes, so it should be easy. It's a double-sided board, and this coil goes on both sides. There's silk screen markings for reference designators as well as component values, so that should make it easy. The coil starts here and goes all the way spiraling in, and on the center it goes through these vias. Then on the bottom side it continues on and ends up over here. But after this first winding, it's also tapped in right here, which is going to play into all this circuitry and make the thing work, hopefully. So on the bottom side, that coil is just on the other end of this capacitor. I have a probe point right there, and the tapped coil is right there, and the entire coil is right there. So I wonder if I can probe this and check the inductance. I put a couple of DuPont connectors in this socket here so I can use it as a probe. So I'm holding the probes across the entire inductor. It says inductance is 0.14 millihenries with 17.4 ohms. And I don't think we can actually pick up what the inductance is on that single turn. I'll try. It found a 36 pico capacitor, which is probably valid. That's fine. So I should start with the resistors lowest lying components. I'll separate those out. I believe this is actually a buzzer, not a speaker. So it's got circuitry inside and you just give it power. And it's got a polarity marking of positive right here, so I should not rip this off until I've installed it in the correct orientation. And yeah, it does say buzzer there. So I'll keep the sticker on. We have a screw terminal here for power, it says 3 to 5 volts. For the power, we have a 6-pin push-on, push-off switch. We have an LED, which has a marking on the silk screen. The flat side goes here. We have transistors labeled 9012, 9012, 9018. And the parts do have those markings. This one is 9018. And a little trimmer pot, which goes in an obvious place. Variable resistor 1. So I'm going to get these resistors in here, starting with what looks like a 2K resistor. Red is 2, black is 0, and then red is two more zeros. And there's a 2K marking right here, so that's where it's going, for better or worse. And I'll bend the leads to keep it in place and put the rest. All right, the three resistors are placed. Now to permanentize it. I find it easier to just put a few components at a time and then solder them and get rid of the leads because otherwise, if there's all these through hole leads coming up, I'm fighting in a forest. So that looks okay. One good reason to keep these cut off leads, if you need to make a quick connection into a connector where you don't have the mating side, you can use these thin leads and they will fit in just fine. Then you can solder up to those and use this as a makeshift connector. Or if you need to fix something on a board, you cut a track and you just need a wire to go a short distance, you can use something like this. Looks like these little ceramic capacitors should go next. So what do we have? 104, 104, those are 100 nano, and the other ones are both 222, and it's all written that way, so we just plug and play. There's a 104 here, and here, and the others are side by side up here. Okay, I think transistors will be next. This one's the 9018. The other two are the same, so they go in as labeled. 
Too bad all components don't stay in like this. It would make it so much easier to assemble. Well, that's shaping up. So maybe I'll do the electrolytic and the LED at the same time. We have 100 micro, 16 volts, and the LED flat side on the left. Maybe potentiometer next. And everything else looks about the same height. I'm going to see if I can get these all done at the same time. I had some trouble maneuvering this, so I just tacked down each part with one lead so I can reflow and get them aligned. I think the speaker turned out okay. And I think we got it. So it wants 3 to 5 volts. 4.5 is what I have. This push on, push off power switch is connected backwards. Normally, don't you push on and it latches in and that turns it on, and then you push again and it pops back out for off? Well, they have it so that right now it's off, but it's depressed. If I push down and release, it's going to pop out and turn on. So it's buzzing right now because you're supposed to adjust the potentiometer until that buzzing just stops. And then you've calibrated it right on the edge of detecting something. And when you disrupt the magnetic field at that point, it's enough to offset this and trigger it. So metal spudger works well. Okay, so it just turned off. I'll leave it there. So let's see if this flying saucer can detect metal. Nothing. 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 It works! Oh, that's where that went. Huh. Japanese Tour, 89 and 90. I used to get a whole lot of bootlegs on CD back in these days. There was one store that really had pretty much mostly this kind of stuff. Back before you could just watch all the live stuff on YouTube, it was interesting to hear the shenanigans in between songs and live solos and stuff. I digress. So, how well does this really work? We're not going to go out treasure hunting, but... So we have some coins. Yeah. I have to get down like about half an inch above this. And it has to be centered. Okay, so about an inch above this I can detect the pile. Same thing, about an inch away from this big hunk of metal, I can detect it. Ah! It can detect its power source. When I went to look up a schematic of this kit, and hopefully some circuit description, I found this Talking Electronics link, which actually has a whole lot of metal detector circuit examples and descriptions and theory, including this other famous square inductor kit, which is basically the same circuit as the round one that I have. So they describe this circuit theory, then they show a modification and talk about that, and then they show this circuit and talk about that. So between all of this, all the explanations are there, and I find it a bit cloudy, but I think this paragraph here, how does the oscillator keep oscillating, 
answers mostly how it functions. So this coil has a starting point right here, and it comes around once, and then it's tapped off, and that's L1. Then it keeps going and goes through the board, comes back around and comes out over here, and that's L2. So L2 is the biggest portion of the entire coil. L1 is just that first loop on the coil. And they have this common terminal here where they are tapped off. And that's the VCC rail. So this L1 single turn is a pickup for the magnetic field generated on the bigger coil. So the transistor is turned on somewhat by this 200K resistor to VCC, but this single turn coil can impact this and turn it on more or even turn it on less. So when the power is applied, we have somewhat of an on transistor. So we have some current going through that bigger coil. The magnetic field begins to build up. And since it's changing, it's induced in that single turn pickup coil and we have the transistor base being turned on a little more. So now there's a more current available to the bigger coil, so it's going to increase its magnetic field again, and that's still going to be picked up in the single turn pickup coil. The transistor is going to be turned on a little more until it's turned on as much as it can, and now this magnetic field is going to be the maximum it can get, but it's no longer changing, so there's nothing being induced in the pickup coil. The voltage here drops, and the transistor is not going to be turned on the same amount. So it's going to be back to the initial power on state where the transistor's turned on somewhat by this 200K. So now that the transistor is not turned on as much as it was, the magnetic field here is going to start to collapse, and now we have a changing magnetic field again, so we can pick it up in this pickup coil. And now it's going to be, because it's a collapsing field, we're going to have a voltage in the opposite polarity. So we're now actually going to turn the transistor fully off instead of turning it more on. So when the magnetic field has fully collapsed, again, there's nothing to pick up on this one turn coil. So we're going to be back to the state where the transistor's turned on slightly by this 200K resistor. And then the cycle repeats. We have a little bit of current and we start building up the magnetic field again. So there's a capacitor across that bigger coil forming a resonant circuit. And there's a little info here. When you have an inductor with a capacitor in parallel and you give it a little pulse of energy, the two components will produce a sine wave. So when you first turn this circuit on, you give it a pulse with that transistor, but that transistor doesn't make the sine wave, it just gives you that pulse at the right time for each cycle. The transistor turns on, gives the pulse of energy, turns off, and the inductor and capacitor produce the smooth sine wave. And the transistor is turned on by that single turn feedback winding. And then, as already described, it keeps regenerating its own transistor pulse through the action of that feedback coil, picking up what's going on in the main coil. So I can't say I fully understand because I haven't really worked with tank circuits. And in the future, maybe I'll try scoping this whole thing out and see what signals are going on. I won't do that today, but let's just go with it and say with this tank circuit, we're giving it pulses of energy and then it's self oscillating and we keep refreshing pulses of energy based on the operation of this circuit itself by picking up the magnetic field and so on. So we have an oscillator going to this Q2 now. So when you turn this on and you adjust this resistor here just before the point where it starts buzzing and turning on the light, you back it off just before it tripped and everything is oscillating. The amplitude of the oscillations here have this second transistor turned on. So we have VCC appearing on the base of the third transistor, keeping it off. So the buzzer is off, the LED is off, the circuit is idle. So we've adjusted this pot to control the amplitude here just before the trip point where everything goes off. So when we bring metal near this coil, some of the flux will be lost to the metal 
and there's less induced energy in the pickup coil, this transistor starts turning off slightly, and that allows this resistor to start pulling the base of this transistor toward ground, which will turn on this transistor, giving VCC to the LED and the buzzer, and you've detected metal. So I'm just learning this as I go right now. I don't have a complete grasp on the tank circuit, and maybe I will want to play around with a separate tank circuit on a breadboard and investigate how all this works. But for now, that's roughly the idea of bringing metal near the coil and being able to trigger an output when the magnetic field has been weakened by flux being lost to that metal. So an easy kit to build, and it does work, as a novelty. Obviously don't expect very much from something that looks like an old Fisher-Price record player.